the partnership that I talk about today comes with many friends and professionals that we have worked with over time. You've just heard Fred Swanecker speak from the Africa Leadership Group, who is really looking to empower young Africans across the continent and is doing so real time. And we've been working with him to try and take those young Africans and give them jobs. We've heard from Kiru, who is a product of the African Leadership Group processes and through his own tenacity and innovation has come up with the Fingo app that was developed and written and provided here in Kenya and will soon be an export. We've worked with the Ministry of Finance, the Treasury, who, we represent, who is represented by the Cabinet Secretary, Professor Ndun. We've worked with the Central Bank who supported us to approve this so that it can be launched here in Kenya as a first. And generally, we thank Your Excellency, the President, for driving a digital agenda in Kenya. And we take these things for granted, but I've had the privilege to travel across many African countries. And what we take for granted in terms of government services, being able to do them online, is not consistently applied across the continent. So I think we should be very proud of our e-citizen services that we are able to access on a regular basis here in Kenya. We've also seen the progress of the Hustler Fund, which again makes it easier for our young entrepreneurs to access funds to start their business. And these do not need to necessarily be complicated businesses, but that access to finance does give them the chance to change their livelihoods, support their family, and achieve their dreams. For us today, this partnership between Fingo Africa, powered by EcoBank, is vitally important. We have spoken to youth and we've asked them what they want, how they want to bank, and it is very different than other segments of the population. They want a product on the go, they want a product that serves their needs, they want a product that is fun, that is exciting, that is convenient, and that evolves over time. And the technology that Fred talked about is actually being able to be empowered through this app. The fact that it can be opened very quickly and easily without having to go into a bank branch already removes the barrier, one of the barriers to opening bank accounts. So by working with Fingo, we're looking forward to banking many young people. We as a bank are represented in 35 African countries and have another four countries outside the continent where we provide banking services. So the power here is to launch in Kenya, and I'm very proud as a Kenyan heading EcoBank Group that we're doing this launch here in Kenya. We are a pan-African bank. What does a young person do, or what can a young person do to make them successful in Africa and enable them to create wealth? Is it to start a business? Is it to attain an education? Perhaps it is to join employment. None of these are correct. The single greatest action a young African can perform in Africa to create wealth for themselves and for their families is to leave. The average household income for a family migrating to the West is 50,000 US dollars annually. The average household income in Sub-Saharan Africa is around 1,000 US dollars. Migration out of Africa leads to the highest wealth creating opportunities. And as a result, if you ask most young people what they want, we want to leave. Even though a lot of the time we're not particularly welcome in the West. By 2050, more than one third of the world's youth will be in Africa. That's over one billion people. We are here because we do not want these young people to leave. We want them to stay here and to create wealth here. A large part of that wealth creation is in financial services. We started Fingo after discovering the sheer amount of unbanked young people in Africa. 
57% of Africans and 19% of Kenyans. And on average, it takes two days to create a bank account, whilst the cost of sending money remains the highest in the world, and financial inclusion remains low. Now, what is Fingo? Fingo means finance on the go. Fingo is an app. It is a financial services app dedicated to Africa's youth that enables them to create bank accounts in under four minutes, transact for cheaper, save, run their businesses, and ultimately give them access to wealth creating opportunities. Fingo was started about three years ago and has since been part of the acclaimed Y Combinator Startup Accelerator. We have worked tirelessly alongside Ecobank to arrive at this launch. For those living at the bottom of the economic pyramid, this initiative is very much in sync in view of the fact that it is as well targeting the youth for purposes of financial inclusivity. In the same bottom-up economic transformation agenda, Your Excellency, within the key result area of the digital superhighway, as you are all aware, we have embarked on an ambitious program of digitizing all government records and digitalizing all government services. And the fact that Ecobank, working in partnership with Fingo, has come up with this virtual platform where the youth can transact business with the bank without physically visiting the bank is again in tandem with our digitalization agenda within government. Finally, Your Excellency, this initiative is as facilitated a situation where the bank's customers are able to transact business while being identified through virtual platforms. And this again is in tandem with our pursuit of a digital identity for all Kenyans, Your Excellency, where in our view, once we digitalize all government services, then while leveraging on digital identity, all Kenyans should be able to transact business with government without physically visiting government services. Again, this is a major initiative from the private sector in augmenting efforts of government in our pursuit of a digital economy, Your Excellency. And in the same vein, I want to encourage as many private sector players as possible to augment our efforts as government so that we realize our overall vision of both a paperless government on one hand and a digital economy on the other so that we position Kenya effectively by way of comparative advantage for purposes of global competitiveness. We have big challenges like healthcare, climate change, infrastructure, education, and we have to find ways to develop our agriculture, to empower women. There's so many challenges that we face as a continent of Africa. And technology is a way for us to solve these problems because we don't have a lot of time in Africa. By 2035, we'll have the largest workforce in the world, a billion people who need jobs. And therefore, when we have a lot of constraints, we have to think unconventionally. We need to reimagine, we need to reinvent. We cannot solve Africa's problems with conventional methods. We need unconventional methods, and technology is the way in which we can do that. I can personally attest to the power of technology. Before the pandemic, we were training a few thousand people on the continent. During the pandemic, we had to leverage technology. And today, we have scaled by 53,000% in just two years. And we're training 200,000 software engineers on the continent of Africa. 12,000 of those are here in Kenya. And our goal is to leverage technology to build the next generation of technology talent for the continent. So we aim to develop five to 10 million software engineers on this continent of Africa so that we can actually make Africa the next India, the next China, with the talent to power economies. Technology is also crucial for improving public sector governance on the continent. In fact, just yesterday, I was at our campus, the African Leadership University campus in Rwanda, where I was leading a session with 43 
leaders from public sector countries across the continent, including three from Kenya, where we're helping them to develop skills to be, become product managers, to think like how com tech companies think. Because what do tech companies do? They first understand their user's problem, then they develop a prototype, they roll it out, and then they use the data to improve it. And that's how we go from version one, version two. So we go from iPhone one to iPhone 10 to iPhone 15, and it gets better. So we're challenging governments to say, what if you thought of your citizens as users? Understand their needs, develop a prototype of a solution, roll it out using data, and then use the analytics to improve the service, and then it gets better and better and better. Estonia is a great example of this. In Estonia, there are only two things that you need to interact with the government for in person. To get married and to get divorced. Everything else is online. And so we are hoping that we can develop public sector leaders who can allow our governments to function with this level of efficiency. Because what does technology do as well? It improves transparency. It helps to remove corruption. Because a lot of things can be traced. And so Kenya's Uduma centers, obviously, it's a wonderful start in that direction. And Your Excellency, we hope that under your leadership, you will continue to push digitization of the government so that your citizens can access so many services much faster and easier at a lower cost, and it will drive uh, trans Kenya will be championing, because we already are, the consolidation of the African market within the framework of the Africa continental free trade area because in that consolidation of that market exists great opportunity for our continent. And as we do that, we must also build the ecosystem that is going to support the coming together of the African people, of the African market, so that we can begin the journey to contribute our share in African trade, in Africa entrepreneurship, and also making it possible for the millions of young people in this continent. We are the youngest continent. We are the continent of the future. As was said here, ably, by 2050, a quarter of the world's population will be living in this continent. And we need to work, to work towards ensuring that the youngest continent with the most creative, innovative labor force provides opportunities for the future. And I have told the Ministry of Finance that Kenya will lead the way in supporting enterprises, medium and small, by making sure that we also support the possibility and the current uh, drive towards having a Pan-African uh, payment system so that we can be able to trade, we can be able to transact in the African continent irrespective of the currencies of every country. It should be possible for us to do business, to sell, trade with African countries without minding whether this is their currency or that is their currency. That is the possibility that the Pan-African payment system gives us and Kenya will champion so that we can eliminate the roadblocks and the hurdles that our business people and our entrepreneurs uh, undergo when they try to trade across boundaries. Uh, of the young people of our republic. And as I have said uh, lately, that the single biggest asset that we have as a nation is our human capital. That human capital is 75% young and therefore the single biggest resource is our human capital represented by our young people. And that is why I am very happy this morning to join you 
in witnessing another milestone in digital transformation journey of the banking and financial sector. This occasion is indeed unique because what is being launched goes beyond the regular offerings of our local fintech. Fingo Africa application aims to become Africa's first youth-centered and purely digital bank. Ecobank, a large banking institution with Pan-African footprints, has set out to leverage digital fintech and diversify its product offering and thus attract a young generation of digital clientele. I want to tell my good friend Jeremy and the Ecobank team, very big congratulations for believing in our young people. <clears throat> to satisfy this emerging cohort of Generation Z and post-millennial clients, institutions have to get capacity to adapt effectively and efficiently at all levels and across enterprises. Our entire bottom-up agenda for economic transformation is aimed at creating tens of millions of new jobs to absorb the many young, skilled Kenyans who graduate from our tertiary institutions every year and to radically enhance the productivity of our labor. Yesterday, I launched a new funding mechanism for our higher education, both in our Tibet and in our universities. Because to sharpen our human capital, to equip our young people with what it takes to be productive, to be effective, is for us to have an education system that is accessible, that is of high quality, but also that is relevant. And we cannot do that unless we have a predictable funding mechanism. As we all know, that space around university, college, Tibet education has suffered for about 15 years because of underfunding. And with it, with underfunding, we've had challenges, we've had um, uh, issues with lecturers, with suppliers, and to a great extent it has had an effect on the quality of our education. I did undertake that because I consider human capital and our young people as the biggest asset that we have as a nation, it is important for government to deploy adequate resources to make sure that our young people get relevant, quality, accessible training and education. And that is the purpose of the program and the new funding model that I launched yesterday that is going to not only increase the amount of money available for the training and teaching and education of our young people, but it is going to be predictable and it is going to be timely. The job creation mandate that we have falls upon every pillar of our transformation agenda with special focus on the digital superhighway and creative economy. The MSME transformation, agriculture and agro-industrial value chains and the affordable housing program. We have an ambitious program, the Digital Superhighway and Creative Economy Agenda, aimed at developing 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic infrastructure to connect learning institutions, government institutions, health facilities, even up to every ward in the Republic of Kenya. This initiative will facilitate the creation of 25,000 free public hotspots 1,450 digital innovation hubs and the connection of over 40,000 learning institutions across the country. We are rolling out this digital infrastructure 
because as was said ably by my good brother there, technology is going to leapfrog our continent into the future. And um, to be able to make it possible for millions of young people to uh, use technology, it is necessary for us to provide the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure, access to uh, the internet that will make it easy and possible for millions of young people to access opportunities, to do business. And that is why we are deploying this one pillar of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda as a digital superhighway. I have seen the ministry is running with it, the whole of government is focused on it, and as you are all aware, we did undertake that we are going to move government to the digital space. Six months ago, we had only 320 government services available in the digital space. Today, we have 3,000, and I am committed that by next month, I am informed by both the Ministry of ICT and uh, the Ministry of Interior that we will have 5,000 services by 30th of May. And by the end of this year, all government services will be available online. The single biggest asset that we have as a nation is our human capital. That human capital is 75% young. And therefore, the single biggest resource is our human capital represented by our young people. And that is why I am very happy this morning to join you in witnessing another milestone in digital transformation journey of the banking and financial sector. This occasion is indeed unique because what is being launched goes beyond the regular offerings of our local fintech. Fingo Africa application aims to become Africa's first youth-centered and purely digital bank, Ecobank a large banking institution with Pan-African footprints has set out to leverage digital fintech and diversify its product offering and thus attract a young generation of digital clientele.